The first steps towards the development of Spartan super soldiers dates to before the era of interstellar exploration, when five brave volunteers were accepted into the first Project Orion on April 13th, 2321. While this original program is generally considered to have failed in delivering a new breed of super soldiers, the cost of augmentation and the risks that the volunteers faced made its large-scale implementation unfeasible. The advances its scientists made in barnic implantation and gene therapies were revolutionary. Although the project was never widely implemented, we now consider the participants in Project Orion the first true generation of Spartans. While their time was brief, their success in countering terrorist and criminal activity in the colonies was a crucial factor in the approval of future super soldier initiatives. There is precious little information surrounding the Orion program in its entirety, let alone something as niche as the augmentation sets they underwent. But what information is available is very telling. During this dive into the augmentations of the Orions, retroactively known as the Spartan One since 2513 at least, I'll reference Dr. Halsey's diary, the official Spartan field manual, and the 2022 Halo Encyclopedia alongside my own research and deep dives to find out as much detail as I can about the Orions, with a little bit of theorizing and speculation for good measure. So, with that in mind, some of this will be based directly in the lore, some of it will be extrapolated and referenced from the lore, and other aspects will be extrapolations and speculations of my own design and, as such, could be retconned at any moment. But for what it's worth, let's get into this. Let's kick this off immediately by getting a baseline feel on what we're looking for here. First and foremost, the only Orion we've actually ever seen in the lore is Sergeant Avery Johnson. I did do a video recently looking at the life and death of Avery Johnson and I strongly recommend it, link is in the description. So many of his physical characteristics and physical feats will be the baselines to which we'll be making a comparison. In addition to this, the 2022 edition of the Halo Encyclopedia references that the improvements were relatively minor, with increases in strength, speed, agility, vision, and reaction times being the primary augmentation sets, while the Spartan Field Manual references both genetic and bionic enhancements with no mention of surgical or chemical augmentations as seen with the Spartan 2s and 3s respectively. This means that the entirety of the Orion augmentation sets, as far as we can tell, come from genetic alterations and bionic enhancements. So let's start with their genetics. Relating specifically to an entry in Halsey's journal dated the 15th of February 2511, Halsey references a few things in regards to the Orion's augmentations which allow us a few clues as to the nature of the Orion augmentation procedures. For the sakes of the ease of editing this, I'll allow my resident Dr. Halsey, Cap Peterson, to give us the information regarding that particular entry. Inserted gene sequences led to subminimal target changes while the immunosuppressants failed in most subjects, causing rampant, irreversible genetic fragmentation and degenerative conditions. Refinement. Next generation candidates must have more malleable, robust DNA structure, repair enzymes, with satisfactory testing of LDNA hydroxyl repolymerase. And the full episode covering that particular entry of Halsey's journal is also linked in the description. The term LDNA relates to beta stereoisomer deoxyribrose, that is the same in D-DNA. It's the left turning and mirror image version of natural DNA as opposed to the naturally occurring right-turning version called D-DNA, L-DNA is more stable than D-DNA to enzymatic degradation by certain nucleases. Since D-DNA is naturally occurring, L-DNA is irrevocably man-made. 
The next term, hydroxyl repolymerase, speaks to a method to both implement genetic alteration on a wide scale in every cell in the body, or body part required, as well as aspects surrounding cell senescence and cell death, likely with a view of supplanting current genetic code and perhaps even with a view to increase lifespan. The term hydroxyl likely relates to a compound that specifically inhibits class 1 ribonucleotide reductase, or RNR, depleting DNTP pools and leading to replication fork arrest. This basically means that the presence of a hydroxyl compound, such as hydroxyurea, causes cellular death. This may have been implemented to kill the original cell or source of DNA that was within the body to make way for a man-made alternative. The term repolymerase likely relates to the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, which is a method widely used to rapidly make millions to billions of copies, complete or partial, of a specific DNA sample, allowing scientists to take a very small sample of DNA and amplify it, or part of it, to large enough amount to study in detail, or, in the case of its application on Orion candidates, make millions or billions of in vitro copies of the man-made LDNA fragments that were implemented into the Orion candidates' bodies, leading to full uptake of the genetic alterations across the host's entire body. The additional reference of immunosuppressants and the fact that they failed in most of the subjects suggests that even though the original cell or host DNA was killed off and the man-made variant was replicated to full uptake, the host's body still had a tendency to reject it, in much the same way as a donor organ recipient could go through organ rejection where the body's immune system identifies the donor organ as a foreign body and attacks it. So this may be the primary means as to how most of the Orion augmentations failed. However, what augmentations were actually implemented? Well, let's get into those. An early precursor to the healing factor augmentation that the Spartan IIs received was likely developed as a part of the genetic engineering augmentations the Orions received, that would eventually become leukocytic coprotein complex and microfibrin spindolase, which leads to wound suppression and near instant clotting of vascular injuries, affording the subject the ability to stem the bleeding from wounds nearly instantly and speed up the healing process thereafter while also minimizing down on the amount of leftover fibrin clots that can narrow the blood vessels and lead to clot detachment and migration, heightening risks of stroke, heart failure, and failed circulation. I levy this augmentation because the only Orion we ever see in combat, being Johnson, appears to have a significantly improved healing factor versus human base normal. The Orions likely also underwent an augmentation wrapped into their gene therapies that altered and elongated their lifespans. I say this because all subsequent super soldier programs received this, so it stands to reason the augmentation predates the Spartan IIs. This is also evidenced by the fact that Johnson at the time of his death in 2552 was 78 years old. Now yes, the senior age but more youthful appearance can somewhat be chalked up to the time spent in cryosleep during long slip space voyages, but I can't see Johnson having spent more than perhaps a decade or so in cryosleep during his career given the known fields of battle he fought on during his 60 year military career and the estimated slip space durations between those locations. This means Johnson's more youthful appearance at the age of 78 is not entirely a consequence of his cryosleep hours, but also due to his Orion augmentations, likely to his telomeres. This is a compound structure at the end of your chromosomes. It can be likened to the plastic tabs on the end of shoelaces, in that when you cut them off the shoelace begins to fray and fall apart, and this is comparable to the telomerase of DNA whereby every time a cell divides, the telomeres are not copied fully. Over time, this causes shorting of the telomerase, eventually leading to the cell being either unable to reproduce itself, known as the Hayflick limit, causing the cell to degrade and self-destruct, or a corruption in the DNA strain that leads to corrupt cell mutation. A telomerase augmentation would mean that the subject cell would divide perfectly 
every single time due to perhaps an adenoviral telomerase replacement therapy. This means that their biology attains a state known as cellular immortality. Now this doesn't mean that the Orions or the later Spartans are immortal, as it takes significantly more genetic engineering and control of environmental factors to attain true immortality, but it does mean that their bodies age significantly slower than a normal human, and injuries that would generally cause severe inhibited function later on in life are cancelled out by the body's ability to rejuvenate its own cells. Going off of the direct suggestions of the official Spartan Field Manual in regards to the augmentation sets and specifically the reaction time increase, it stands to reason that the myelin sheaths may have been augmented. Myelin sheaths are an insulative material on the nerves that allow signals to travel through the nervous system at speed. It seems likely then that the Orions received a myelin augmentation, something akin to super myelination, but an earlier prototype. This is the process of adding additional myelin sheaths onto the nervous system, making neural impulses move much faster across the body. Contrary to the opinions of some, this does not mean that the entire nervous system is covered in myelin. Myelin does not form a single long sheath over the entire length of an axon. Rather, each myelin sheath insulates the axon over a single long section, and in general, each axon comprises of multiple long myelinated sections, separated from each other by a short myelin sheath gap, called Nones of Ranvier. With no myelin sheath, the action potential travels across the axon at a constant rate. However, with myelin sheaths, the action potential jumps down the axon, being much faster than the former. I suggest this, although I understand the gameplay implications and such, and the lore behind it is what I'm actually interested in, but Johnson appears to be able to react and respond to threats on the battlefield at a similar though not identical speed to Spartans. He is able to engage the Arbiter in hand-to-hand -hand combat and match his speed and power. It's widely accepted that elites closely match the physical speed and power of Spartans on average, so Johnson being able to pace up to the Arbiter suggests heavily that reaction times may have been a factor involved in his Orion augmentations. And finally, for the genetic augmentations. Owed majoritively to an excerpt from Silent Storm where Johnson coaches some ODSTs during simulated combat ops against the Spartan Twos, Johnson's tactics and unconventional strategies actually proved to be extremely effective for the ODSTs and turned what was going to be a hands-down win on the part of the Spartans to a much more competitive and unclear result as the ODSTs used these tactics to their advantages. The Spartans still won, but the advice they received from Johnson upscaled their tactics to be closer to an even split. This ingenious coaching and the effects of it suggest that Orions may have received cerebral enhancements on top of their extremely rigorous physical and mental training. An early variant of the cyclosynthetic neural transmission gene sequences, which are suggested increasing intelligence and cognitive markers, leading the subject to have much faster learning speed, higher intelligence, better abstract and creative thinking may have been implemented. So to recap, the genetic augmentations appear to have been designed to kill the original DNA strain associated with the respective enhancement and propagate an artificially created LDNA augmentation across the subject's genome. The specific alterations made increase the Orion's healing capability, allowing them to heal much more rapidly and stem bleeding much faster. An increase in the Orion's longevity or lifespan by defying the Hayflick limit and enabling cellular immortality, alterations to the myelin sheaths of the subject's nervous system to increase reaction time and seemingly enhance the subject's mental faculties. That still leaves strength, speed, agility and vision to be augmented by bionic means as outlined in the official Spartan Field Manual. So let's move on to the bionic implantations. As previously mentioned, the Spartan Field Manual, on page 52 to be precise, makes reference to bionic implantations. Specifically, that the scientists undertaking the Orion program had immense advances that were utterly revolutionary and paved the way for the future Spartan super soldier programs. Now, bionics are defined as mechanical systems that function like living organisms or part of living organisms. So this means that bionic implantations are mechanical systems that upscale or enhance aspects of the Orion's biology. This enables the last few parameters of augmentation to be achieved. Strength, speed and agility can all be addressed with a single augmentation here. 
Electroactive polymer fibers, or more specifically an ionic polymer metal composite, is an ionomeric membrane plated with various noble metals that show a massive deformatory response to a proportionally tiny electric field, and show the greatest promise for biomimicry to naturally occurring fibers such as collagen. With minimal innovations to their currently established properties, these EAPs can be engineered to accept sodium and potassium ions from neural and muscle tissue impulses, with surfaces that allow them to anchor to and bond with the muscle tissues they are implanted within. This augmentation would involve implanting these fibres into the skeletal muscles of the host and allowing the patient's own bioelectrical signals to stimulate the EAPs into a deformatory response, mimicking and enhancing the strength of the host's muscle fibres. Single EAP fibres can be injected or fired into the skeletal muscles. They are implanted laterally to match the fibre direction of the muscle so that the deformatory response acts in its cantilever configuration. Implanted EAPs result in an increase in the force of contraction and increase contractile response time, thus increasing strength and speed of muscle contraction, while also granting superior control of contractions, adding to the subject's agility. Vision is the last directly mentioned enhancement that the Orions experienced, and based on our current real-world technology, it is entirely possible that the Orions have an enhanced corneal implant to improve their vision. Corneal implants improve the subject's eyesight and night vision. Small incision vectors would be cut into the edge of the cornea where small tools would then be able to access behind the cornea. Here, a dual layer nanomaterial, a detector and an imager, is implanted behind the corneas. The first outermost layer detects a much larger portion of the electromagnetic spectrum than the visible light the human eye can usually detect, and sends that input to the imager. The imager is similar to a screen except it's transparent, extremely thin, and converts the input from the detector into visible light and emits it into a coherent beam into the eye. The consequence of this is that the infrared and ultraviolet light is rendered visible to the user, while visible spectrum light is enhanced in its saturation and contrast, rendering the subject able to see in near perpetual darkness and see in enhanced colour vision. On top of this, the organic lens within the eye could be removed. Time would also be taken to clear the vitreous, the fluid inside of the eyes, of any debris or floaters, and then an engineered artificial lens would be implanted and affixed to the muscles behind the iris. This lens is near optically perfect and focuses light approximately four times better than the organic lens of the eye, meaning that the subject on average would have 80-20 vision, being able to read text from 80 feet away that a normal person can only read from 20 feet away. Once implanted, the incision self-seals and the eyes heal themselves very rapidly thereafter. And just as my own little additional speculation, I want to put two additional augmentations in there for consideration. First and foremost, an electroactive polymer weave that is implanted into the muscles of the heart. The electroactive polymers are materials which deform in shape when the electric field is applied to them, and the EAPs are fully biocompatible, meaning that they can be used within the body with no adverse effects. They can be made particularly sensitive to electrochemical potentials created by the sinoatrial node to regulate the heartbeat. Once the sinoatrial node creates the impulse which travels across the heart and causes the muscle to contract, so the implanted EAPs also contract, giving the heart an additional contraction force, thereby alleviating some of the mechanical strain on the heart to supply the muscles with enough blood. Due to the mechanical assistance that is afforded by the EAPs, the heart is capable of pumping a much higher volume of blood per beat than average, meaning a larger volume of blood is then available to the lungs and to the muscles for reoxygenation and physical activities, thereby increasing endurance. Due to the increase in blood volume, steps are also taken to reinforce the arteries leading to and from the heart. Specifically, the arteries are implanted with high tensile biocompatible synthetic collagen weave, which not only allowed the arteries to handle higher volumes of blood flow without any particularly adverse effects, but also anchors them more securely to the heart to avoid problems such as separation from the heart under extreme impacts or deceleration. And on top of this, an increase in the blood itself to increase the efficiency of oxygen uptake for the Orion candidates to make full use of their augmented cardiac structures, a chemical blood substitute capable of carrying oxygen 10 times more efficiently than natural blood with 10 times more efficient cellular and deep capillary penetration can be used and implanted as easily as an IV can be fitted. 
This results in much higher oxygen saturation, allowing muscles and organs an abundant supply of oxygen. Also carries carbon dioxide out of the body much more efficiently. Blood substitutes are actually very common in the medical industry and are nearly completely risk-free. The body, generally speaking, naturally filters out the substitute over time, meaning effects will wear off and will need replenishment. However, it's not impractical to believe that innovations in the parafluorocarbon blood substitutes could see these compounds having either a much longer lifespan within the body or an indefinite one. And that just about rounds out this video. What do you think? Do these augmentation sets about add up for the Orions in general? Do you think the augmentation sets suggested here actually match up with what we do know, the very limited information we do know of course, of the Orion augmentations as referenced in Halsey's journal, the official Spartan field manual and the most recent Halo encyclopedia? And if you think there should be any amendments, stick them in the comments down below and I may revisit this. But until then, Thanks for watching. If you're new here and liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button while you're at it so you don't miss my future uploads. Links are in the description to get connected and jump into the Discord community with me, and if you really love the content I'm making, consider supporting the channel over on Patreon for tons of awesome perks. Pop your comments down below if you have an idea of what I should cover next, and hang around for the end of the video for other suggested videos you might be interested in. Huge shouts to my patrons, Spartan10148, the metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet, Phantom, Thomas, Mikhail, and Irrefutable Justice, my monitors, Andrew, Cameron, Darian, Flaming Halo, Madness, Masked Owl, Michael, Spartan0137, The Cave Potato, Uwu Master, and Wolf Eclipse, my sub-monitors, my growing fleet of Strato Sentinels, my ever-vigilant Enforcers, and all the other awesome patrons that are helping to support the channel in a big, big way. Huge shout out to Todd Morrison for keeping the installation powered with that glorious vacuum energy. Much love to you all, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.